not yet. Hey everybody, we're back out here, Underground Metalworks and Weldworks Training Center. I have filled out all of my proper paperwork, so now I'm officially a certified welder. Right, Jason? Arise, certified welder Wigington. That's not really how it works, but it is a pretty simple process. Let's go ahead and get you certified at D11 using flux core gas shielded in the 3G position. All right, so Jason, how does this work then? The first thing we're gonna talk about is the routing sheet. This is probably the most important piece of paper that you filled out during the documentation process. This is gonna tell us all about the different hold points. So when it comes to certifying a welder, there's specific hold points that I need to witness and verify before you can move on to the next step. You're gonna tack these plates up, and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to verify that the fit up is correct. We're gonna go over the welding procedure specification. You have to weld within the parameters of this document. If you weld outside of these parameters, it's a fail. Right after that, we're gonna talk about the root pass. Once you put your root pass in, I have to come over and then inspect the root pass. What I'm looking for is lack of fusion or any other discontinuity that would cause that to fail. If you pass the root pass, you go on and finish, you put your fill and cap in, I come back and do a visual inspection on your cap and make sure that's within tolerance. Once it passes visual, we're gonna go ahead and cut it up and we're gonna bend it and do a destructive bend test according to D11. Now I went ahead and put together a sample plate for you to check out. You're gonna pack yours up just like this one. Okay. These are your plates right here. All of the plates, the filler metal, everything that we're working with here has traceability. That's the big difference between certification and qualification. If you just welded this out right now and we didn't use a WPS, you'd be a qualified welder if everything passed. However, because of all the documentation that goes into it, that's gonna be the difference in certifying you. Once you're done, you're gonna have additional documentation. We're gonna fill out a welder performance qualification record and I'm gonna submit all of this information to the American Welding Society. And within a few weeks, you'll be able to receive an AWS wallet card, which then will be listed on the AWS website. So future employers, current employers, they can actually access your welding certification through the portal. I'm excited, let's get to it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into prepping all of this material for my test. I'll take a quick look at this thing. Yeah, we won't prep the sides. So this is, like I said, your parameters that you're gonna be working off of today. Your gas is listed, the AWS material specification, classification, the type of gas, the flow rate, wire feed speed, amps, volts, travel speed, all that good stuff. And then we also have a bead sequence in here, but you can also use stringer beads as an alternative. So let's go ahead and get your machine set up and make sure you're following within the range of the, uh, the document. And then as you're tack welding and putting everything together, I'm gonna go ahead and check your machine with a calibrated multimeter to make sure you're hitting the appropriate amperage. Cool. So right now it says the volts, we wanna be between 23 and 28. Let's go for 24. That seems pretty nice. As far as our wire feed speed, it says between 270 and 330. And I know just from running this in the past, we want a little bit more on that. We'll go 305. And on the inside here, I already checked that we have 045 dual shield wire in here. So that's good to go. Now we have to set our gas flow. Right here, we see our flow rate. It's gonna be between 40 and 50. So we're gonna set this, and we want the top of the ball to be right at 40. So with our shielding gas, we just need to double check. We've got our 85% argon and 15% carbon dioxide. Electrode positive. So down here, you can tell coming from the machine, that is in our positive, and our work clamp is on negative, so we're good to go on our polarity. All right, got all the prep done. Now it's time to tack. We're gonna use a backing strap to set our gap there. Make sure we got runoff on the bottom and the top. Now we're gonna go ahead and tack it. Eyeballs. Like that that way. My tacks have kind of pulled up on the plate here. So now I'm going to pull back down using this clamp. So, and then the tacks, we wanna make sure that we have tacks that are one inch long to the top 
and then two in the middle, good to go. How about? This ain't so bad. Well, Inspector. All right, so right now we're gonna go ahead and check Bose fit up. According to the WPS, you have a quarter inch root opening. Now, according to D11, you get a little bit of tolerance. So you actually get minus 1 16th and plus a quarter inch. So as long as your root opening is somewhere between 3 16th and 1 half inch, you're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and check that out now. 0.291. And you really don't have to get this precise, but it's just easier to get down into the groove. 0 0.280. You're well within tolerance. All right. Okay, so now what I need you to do, clean up three small strips right in here, probably about an inch and a half long, three quarter inches wide, and I'm gonna go ahead and transfer your welder number to this plate. So as I do the destructive testing, we can keep track of all your pieces. Okay. So right now I'm just gonna transfer Bo's welder number. So he was assigned a welder test ID number when he came through the door. I'm gonna transfer that number to the three spots in this plate. That way, once we go ahead to do destructive testing, I'll be able to retain all the sections of his plate and not get it mixed up with somebody else's. All right, Bo, so everything's good to go. I'm gonna ask you to tack your piece right onto this bar here. Wherever we set this in position, when you buy off on it, we can't move that until you're completely done with the test. So make sure that wherever you put it, it's nice and comfortable for you and you'll be able to run all the required passes. If for some reason the test piece does fall during the, the testing process, just let me know, we'll go ahead and fix it back up. But if you take it down for any reason, it's an automatic disqualification. Heard. Do you want it on top or a, like, can I attack it like that? Up, it's up to you. Can I use this as a prop? Yep. Okay, then I know what I want to do. So after doing a little experimenting before I dive in to weld this out, found I needed to bump my wire feed speed to around 300 and my voltage down to about 23. Inspector, do I need to show you anything else before diving in? So now you got everything fit up and tacked in place, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some marks on here just to make sure that you don't move this during the testing process. Not that you will, but we're just gonna keep everybody honest. All right, Bo, you are ready to put your root pass in. All right. Once you put the root pass in, go ahead, clean it, wire brush it, and call me back over to inspect the root. Some of the things I'm looking for on the root inspection are gonna be lack of fusion, uh, inadequate joint penetration, and cracks. You won't be needing this anymore. No wire wheel? It's a weld test, not a grind test. Sorry, bud. Ah. All right. Feel pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and get to chipping and brushing, and we'll see how I feel after that. See your inspector. I got a root pass. You got in. that root pass in? Yes, sir. Call that a root pass? I tried. <laughs> no, that looks good. I tried my best. So essentially, what I'm looking for, like I said earlier, is lack of fusion, lack of penetration or any cracks, okay? That's what would disqualify you on your root pass. So I'm gonna grab your clipboard. I'm gonna need you to initial that you made the root pass. I'm also going to initial that I inspected the root pass as well as the results. All right, Bo, go ahead and initial here that you perform the root pass. All right. And I'm going to initial that I inspected your root pass. So now you're going to go ahead and fill and cap the plate. I don't need to see it again until it's done. However, if you need me, if anything happens, just give me a shout and I'll be right over. All right. All right. I'm Wells. At the top, I started off really good. And then I definitely was not fully positioned correctly for the top half. Still looks like I'm gonna be able to cap it, but it is a little wonky. I'm gonna have to be cooking with this two bead stringer cap. 
Well, one thing I like to do is take one of these little heat temp sticks to just check before I cap because this is super spicy to see how hot we are. We are hot. So I might need to take a little second to let this cool down. We'll be back after this short break. All right, so I marked it and it's leaving a mark and not burning off. That means we are below the temperature of 350. So that should be safe for me to go ahead and start putting in my two bead cap. We're doing stringers uphill. It's gonna be a good time. Hi, boys. Mr. Inspector! What you got? Oh, there's, there's something wrong with your slag. It just blew right off. Blew right off. Yeah. Good job, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, get her cleaned up. You got one more pass. One more pass. One more. I let it cool back down, tested it. We are under 350, so I'm going to go ahead and put in this last cap. Don't f it up, bro. It's the last pass. You got this. I'm feeling confident here. The slag is peeling. I was able to blow it off. So that's a good sign to me. I am a little nervous about the very, very tippy top of this. Let's give it a brush. We are tied in, toe to crown. I hope that little divot's not gonna mess us up. Mr. Inspector! Got her done? Yes, sir. So far, so good. Bo, why don't you go ahead and take it down, set it on the table, and we'll put some tools on it. Heard. All right, Bo, now that you've got the test completed, go ahead and initial that you have your fill and cap done, and then just verify that your numbers are still on the plate and initial in these two spots right here. All right. Let's see. All right, Bo, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the visual. What I'm looking for now is undercut, see if there's any cracks in here. The great thing about gas shield of flux core is you really have to try to get undercut. This, this process is very forgiving. Uh, so I don't anticipate we're gonna find any undercut. I'm just gonna run the flashlight on the outside of the toes because if there is undercut, it's gonna cast a shadow and I'll be able to see it really quick. So I don't see any undercut whatsoever. Now what I'm gonna check to make sure the weld is above flush, but it doesn't exceed an eighth inch in weld size. So I'm checking your lowest spots first, just to make sure we're not below flush, which you're good there. And now we'll start checking some of the high spots to make sure you're not above an eighth of an inch. You're not below flush and you're not above an eighth of an inch. So what does that mean now? What's that means next? we go to the next stage of the process where I'm gonna cut two strips out of here. We're gonna mark one root bend, we're gonna mark the other one face bend, and then we're gonna run them through the guided bend test, and then we're gonna make sure they pass the bend test. Let's do it. Oh, this is kind of important. All right, Bo, so I got these all prepped up. So according to code, all I have to do is grind the face down, grind the root down, and then I can radius these corners about an eighth of an inch. So I didn't go too, too far into an eighth of an inch. There's a little less on there, uh, but we should be good to go. It's not gonna affect your, uh, your bends regardless. Now, typically what I like to do is I like to find the side with the greatest discontinuity. So if there's any defects that I can see inside of the, uh, the root or the face just on the surface, you know, that's where all the stress is gonna accumulate. So far, you've got clean pieces, so I don't see any slag entrapment, I don't see any, any problems whatsoever. We're gonna go ahead and throw it in the bender. I'm gonna line this up, and we have to press that into a 180 degree U-shape. So let's go ahead and bend the face first. So it looks like your face is clean. Let's check your root. This is always the fun one. That's why I saved the best for last. The moment we've all been waiting for. Oh. Uh-oh. See that? That's a clean bend. Hey! Congratulations, man, you passed. The only thing we have left to do now is fill out some more paperwork. Favorite Good day. job so far. Thank you, sir. All right, Bo, everything's been filed with the AWS. Here's a copy of your WPQR.
Not yet. Oh. Well, Jason, this has really been a dream come true. I, I, I can say I'm a qualified welder. You're a certified welder now. A certified welder. Certified welder. We got the documentation to prove it. If someone wants to get certified in welding, where should they go to look? Well, if they want to get AWS certified, then go to aws.org and just click on the certification tab and they'll be able to find the closest accredited testing facility in their area. If they're located in Central Florida, they can reach out to me directly at Underground Metalworks on Instagram or shoot an email to undergroundmetalworks at gmail.com. Well, I appreciate you and everything you do, man. Yeah, man. Anytime. Thanks for coming out. Until next time, we'll see you out there. We'll see you out there. <laughs>